Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar title, The Best Fit, Choosing the Right School for Your Child. I'm Dr. Joyce Luce Pascaran, your moderator for the day. For a better viewing experience, let me guide you through this Zoom web webinar. You can click View Options on top, click Fit to Window, check the side-by-side -side mode so you have a good view of the slides and the speakers. Click the chat box for your questions, answers to questions, and your comments during the webinar. Should you wish to leave the webinar before it ends, click on the leave button below. We are happy to announce that we will now be streaming live on the FB pages of the Medical City Institute of Pediatrics, the Center for Developmental Pediatrics and Feeding Clinic, and the Medical City. You may share this to your friends who cannot log in to Zoom. All right, we're just waiting for our live stream on FB Live. All right, we are happy to announce that we will now be streaming live on the FB pages. Welcome again to our Zoom and FB participants to our webinar titled The Best Fit Choosing the Right School for Your Child. Our webinar series is called Institute of Pediatrics Learning Academy's Coffee and Conversations. We hope to fill your morning with gems to power up your Saturday mornings, so grab a cup of coffee and just relax. Before we start our webinar, let us view this video from the Medical City Center for Developmental Pediatrics. This webinar is brought to you by the Institute of Pediatrics Learning Academy. Watch out for this logo for our future webinars. Now I have my coffee and I'm ready for our conversation. To start our webinar, allow me to introduce our speakers for today. Let us welcome Dr. Aisel DiPico, a consultant of developmental pediatrics at the Medical City, a diplomat of the Philippine Society for Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics, a member of the training committee of the Fellowship Training in Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics. Hi, Doc Isol. Good morning. Doc Joyce, good morning. And sa akong mga kababayan na Bisaya, maayong buntag sa inyong tanan. Ayan. Okay. Let me introduce our next speaker, Dr. Patricia C. Adriano, a developmental and behavioral pediatrician at Calamba Medical Center and HealthServe Los Baños, Laguna, a diplomat of the Philippine Society for Developmental Pediatrics and Behavioral Pediatrics. Let us welcome Doc Patsy. Hi, Doc Patsy. Good morning. Good morning, everyone joining in Zoom today and also our participants in Facebook Live. So before we start, I also want to introduce our moderator for today. So Doc Joyce Guse Pascaran is a developmental screening clinician in our clinic in the Medical City Center for Developmental Pediatrics. She is also an emergency room consultant in the Medical City and a consultant pediatrician in the Medical City South Luzon and in our Lady of Perpetual Health Binyan Laguna. Hi, Doc Joyce. And hi, Doc Patsy, Doc Isol. So let's greet some of our uh, viewers. Hi, welcome po. Uh, I think Dr. Vivina Chu is joining us. Hi, Dr. Good morning. <laughs> ayan. And also, um, viewers from Cebu, I think, also. Ayan, Doc Isol. 
You can, maybe you can. <laughs> yeah, may And so happy to see, no, familiar, hindi faces, eh, familiar names, diba? So, mm-hmm. hello, mga friends. Thank you for the support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you also. Hello. I think a lot of um, pediatricians and uh, co-parents are joining us today. So, good morning. Thank you for um, giving us your time, no, to listen for today's lecture. Ayan, okay. I'm sure all the mommies, daddies, and other doctors are so excited to learn, no? Kasi we're all curious. Ano nga ba ang pinakamagandang school for our child? And kailan nga ba dapat pumapasok itong mga kids na to in school? For our audience, saan nga ba kayo nag-preschool before? And what type of school is it? And do you think it was the best fit for you? So please type in your answers in the chat box. So ako, I had my preschool in a private school. I think it's a traditional school. And I think it worked for me naman. How about you, Doc Isol and Dr. Patsy? Yeah, ako, I won't say my age. Pero I think my <laughs> time kasi, parang wala pa masyadong choice. No? It was all mostly traditional. So I went to a very traditional type of school. Chinese school <laughs> actually. So 8 to 5 ang classes namin non-stop. Okay. Pero okay. I think okay naman. It worked naman for me. Because I'm the type na who likes uh, parang may ganun. No? Yung parang may direction ako. Okay. Ikaw, Doc Patsy, feeling ko same tayo. Yeah, so I also attended a traditional school. So I had around 40 classmates no, all throughout um, my schooling years. And um, during that time, I think kasi most of the um, kids are in that setup. So ako naman, I was able to cope well. Um, sige, let's look at um, what the audience um, type in, no? Well, si uh, Doc Jackie and Dr. Gomez. Hi, good morning. Um, sila, they also went into traditional school. So same sa ating tatlo, no? And coped well naman uh, during the time that they did their studying. All right. Okay, I think... Si Dr. Um, Art as in private Catholic traditional. Catholic. Nako, medyo strict din yan. Parang Chinese school din yan, no? Fatsi. <laughs> Ito, si Miss Villegas. When I was in prep, I was on School of Tomorrow Education Method. Wow. Work for me and what shock? And what was transferred shock. into... Uh-oh. Shock? When I transferred Uh-oh. into a traditional school. Ayan, maka, we'll learn more about this later, Uh-oh. no? All right. Okay, prep school na traditional. Okay, usually, no, medyo marami. Uy, si mm-hmm. ma'am... Ma'am Miriam attended public school and turned out okay. Yay! Good. Okay. They would like to know more about Montessori. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll I think, uh, Noren, we have um, participants in Facebook answering. So, si uh, Mr. Angelo Salvador, no, sabi niya, um, public kindergarten yung inattendan niya. So, I think, ano, big classroom setup din po yun, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All so, right. So, I'm sure mas marami ng schools ngayon compared to before, right, Doc Isol? Now, maybe Ma- Doc Isol can tell us more about these types of schools, no? Dr. Isol? Okay, hold on na. Let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. So, for this part, no, we'll be talking about the different type of schools. We will compare and contrast them. And also talk a little about school readiness. So, again, no, just a disclaimer na parang there are really so many types of school. But what I will be discussing today is the more common ones lang uh, for the time that we have. Okay. So, in general, no, schools are divided into public and private. So, when we say public schools, these are the ones operated and funded by the government. And they must adhere no, to the government rules of curriculum, policy, and governance. Private schools naman, they are the ones that are uh, privately run. No? So they're autonomous and uh, they have their own funding kasi. Um, they still have to follow the government curriculum, but they're also free to offer more than the required, but not less than the mandated. Okay, So... Further subdividing our public schools, no, or in general, it's uh, mostly divided either school-based learning or home-based learning. So for public schools, we have choices of, again, traditional, um, magnet, which are your vocational, technical, and arts, and special education. And then DepEd also has a home-based learning, which is called the DepEd Home Study Program. And for the private schools, we also have um, traditional type, 
um, we have the progressive type of school and education. So again, for the progressive, no, there are so many types again today. I think there was more than seven. Um, but we will discuss the three that are the most common. Um, for the home-based learning, there are two different types, which are the structured and the unstructured. So let's start first. Now we will compare um traditional school versus a progressive school. So much of the difference in the traditional versus the progressive education system, it boils down to fundamental differences in their beliefs about what and how schools should teach. So for the traditional, the main philosophy is to focus on shaping students into moral and educated individuals who can contribute to the working world when they become adults. But the students here are treated as a group. No? When they teach, you teach them as a group. Um, in contrast to progressive schools, they have student-centered philosophy. So they are focused on engaging students in real-world problem-solving activities in a cooperative learning environment that ensures complete development of a child, no? so mentally, physically, emotionally, and morally. And each child's learning journey is individualized. So in traditional schools, the teacher's role is mostly as an academic instructor and the authority figure. So they're the ones who design the curriculum within a structure with set expectations. So this means that parang everyone, no, you're expected to master a certain topic or a lesson at the same time. Um, the students usually play a passive role and teaching is usually classroom-based and through direct instruction like mga lectures, ganon. For progressive naman, the teachers uh, act mostly as facilitators or guides or mentors. Um, they guide the, student, the students by making sure they create a learning environment that allow making choices and exploration. So the students often play an active role no, as they get to decide what they want to learn for that day. And they work collaboratively because they work with their classmates on group projects. Um, learning is through self-directed learning, discovery learning, cooperative work, hands-on projects, and experiential learning. Okay. Um, for the curriculum, traditional schools are usually structured, no? So again, di ba, like, nakaset na, sa so start pa lang ng year, nakaset na yung lesson plan for the whole year. And kailan tinuturo yung lesson, kailan yung mga periodical exams, di ba? And usually subjects are taught separately, like may different subjects tayo, math, English, ganyan, reading, writing, ganyan. But in progressive schools, the curriculum is less rigid, no? Um, but they also have an idea like what the child is supposed to be learning for that year, but there's no strict time or schedule and when they will teach that lesson. Kasi nga, di ba, child-led eh. So, depends on the child's interest. Um, and the subjects are also integrated as a connected whole. So, like in the picture, no, the example, uh, the topic is plant. So, they learn the science of the plant. So, they study about the photosynthesis, mga ganon, uh, the structures of a plant. And then for math, they measure the plants, they get the area of what how much the plant is um occupying. And then for the arts, so they can draw no or copy the plants, or they can make a painting of the plants. And then for reading and writing, they can like write a short story about plants. So ganun siya. So ganun sila nag teach. Um for the methodologies in the traditional, no, it's mostly um lectures. Um, they based on mga textbooks, uh, they have worksheets and preparation, and the students learn uh, individually. Kasi di ba, when you listen to the teacher, so you learn on your own. But there are also, but they also have occasional mga group projects din naman. Um, for progressive pro curriculum, it mostly consists of uh, group works or projects, so hands-on learning or materials, um, direct experiences, um, so yun, so they spend time no in direct contact with the community beyond the confines of the classroom or the school. And le learning is usually play-based. For the assessments, for the traditional, there are usually um, periodic quantitative assessments. So yun na yun, yung mga exams, mga quizzes, and then you get your grades, no mostly grade-based. And then um, parang you get uh, your grades quarterly, di ba? Parang ganun. For traditional, uh, for the progressive, so they mostly base it on mga, ano naman, qualitative assessment. So iba-iba yan, varied. So um, they also try to grade the process no, of how you reach your output. So again, they also have mga group projects. So ganyan, yung example, pag ang topic is volcano, then they make a volcano. 
or they can have a play no about a certain topic kanya the topic is about the medieval ganyan so kaya ganyan princess and prince and then or they can make a poster uh, of or, or drawing of what they learned no about that day's lesson um again no there is really no good or bad type of school or curriculum what is more important is if that is the best fit for your child so for the traditional this is best for students who work well no in an orderly environment and like knowing what to expect in both the long and short term diba kasi nga you get assignments every day or your lessons every day and then but you also know yung school year nga na um lesson plan niya is nakaset na yon they are good in memorizing no they have very good mem memory skills and they are auditory and visual learners kasi nga diba mostly uh, lectures diba presentations and they like direct instruction from their teachers or from authority figures when it comes to their learning so for the progressive schools naman this is best for those that are hands on learners or yung gusto talaga nahahawakan nila na experience nila and they learn by doing rather than simply listening and taking in the information um this is also good for the more social students no kasi there are a lot of mga collaborative and group works and these are students who need to learn at a varying pace ito yung mga bata no na ayaw nilang minamadali sila so they want to learn things at their own pace okay so now I will talk about a few different types of progressive schools naman. So like I mentioned, oh, there's a lot of type, but I will just focus on the three most common. So first, um, we will talk about the Montessori. So their philosophy is that each child is seen as having an inherent set of strengths and that these strengths will emerge differently from each individual. So they have Montessori-specific materials that focus on developing the academic skills. So their classroom will be filled with developmentally appropriate materials that entices the child to explore. And the teachers are trained to teach little and observe much. But when they do, they will teach uh, one child at a time. So they have no textbooks and they learn directly from the environment or from other children. So that's why they have multi-age classrooms. So usually three years is combined in one classroom. Um, they have uninterrupted work time of 90 to 180, 180 minutes. So yung work time yan, play-based naman yan. This type of school is good for helping children to acquire leadership skills and independence uh, they focus on quality academic programming. So may academics pa din naman talaga. Pero yung programming, the learning process is what's more focused. And the classroom environment. So this is good for those um, individualized learning ang needed. So this is what a typical Montessori classroom looks like. So as you can see, no, um, they have mga Montessori specific materials. And it is the teacher who sets up that environment. So hindi pa rin naman talaga na parang walang control yung teacher. Siya naman yung naglalagay ng mga choices which are developmentally appropriate for the age of those kids in the class. Okay? And then, um, the Waldorf. So Waldorf, they believe that each child is filled with potential. It is simply a matter of giving every child a nurturing environment and the freedom to unfold at one's own pace. So they believe that children should not be rushed no, into adult consciousness, but allowed to savour their childhood. So they usually use arts, craft, music, and language in teaching of the academics. It is still the teacher no, who presents the materials to the child, but the children integrate what they learn through illustrations in mga lesson books or um, in ganyan, mga plays. Mga ganyan. So again, play-based learning siya. And they also have a multi-age classroom, pero mas konte lang, either two years or minsan puro same age lang talaga. Um, these are good for cultivating children based on their individual gifts and challenges. And for those who want some routine-based setting pa din, and for kids focus on the arts and creativity. So maganda dito yung mga kids na very artistic and very creative and imaginative. So this is the best ano, for them. Um, so this is what a Waldorf classroom looks like. No? They believe kasi that school should be like an extension of the home. So if you see their classroom, para lang ding sala no, nila. So parang it's like a home-like setting filled with natural materials. So for the Regio Emilia, they believe that the rich child is an active learner seeking the meaning of the world from birth, a co-creator of identity, knowledge, culture, and values, and born with a hundred languages. So meaning non, each child will communicate differently 
from every child. Kaya 100 languages siya. So teacher is a learner no? alongside the children um, to provoke, co-construct, and stimulate thinking. So they also emphasize children's co collaboration with their peers. So again, multi-age classroom siya. Ito three years din sila. And they focus on project-based learning naman. So kasi nga, mostly group works naman sila. The environment no, also is very important because they consider it as the third teacher. So diba, you learn from your peers, you learn from your teacher, and you learn from the environment. So yun yung Regio Emilia. So this school is good for children who likes to learn through collaboration, uh, students that are empowered no, through exploration as they develop their higher order thinking, analysis, and synthesizing skills. So these are kids who like to take control of their learning and don't really need a lot of directions. So this is what a typical uh, Regio Emilia classroom looks like. So again, parang natural, parang medyo natural setting. Wala silang mga specific materials, no? Like in Montessori, may mga Montessori specific materials. So sa kanila, kung ano lang talaga yung naturally nakikita mo ng mga toys. And again, um, age appropriate naman sila. Okay, so uh, special education naman, these are special needs schools and programs for kids who have challenges or disabilities that interfere with learning. So they provide the support that's not normally provided in mga general education programs. No, um, These schools and programs, they tailor the learning to address each child's unique combination of needs. So they create adaptations to allow the kids no, still to meet age-appropriate educational goals. So most of the kids in a special education program have their own individualized education program or an IEP. Uh, they offer a wide range of approaches. So this may include smaller class size or parang individualized learning, one-on-one -on -one support, um, self-contained classrooms, resource rooms, and learning aids. So for the home-based learning, this is um, considered an alternative delivery mode no? that aims to provide learners with access to quality basic education through a home-based environment. So they need to be facilitated no, by a qualified parent, guardian, or tutors who have undergone relevant training. So this allows families no, to educate according to their personal faith, philosophy, and values. And they adjust learning schedules around the family schedules and circumstances. So two big types no, of um, homeschooling are the structured and the unstructured. So when we say unstructured, these are the DepEd accredited homeschool program that still follows the basic curriculum with articulated goals and outcomes that attempts to imitate no, the structure of a traditional school setting while personalizing the curriculum. So sila, uh, ito yung type na parang they still have a parang classroom in their house. Um, they they have uh, school time, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. school na. Then they do, meron din sila mga flag ceremony, may mga prayer, so may mga ganun. So parang yung school, nilipat lang sa house. Okay? For the unstructured naman, this is the independent homeschooling. No? This is any form of home education where parents do not construct a curriculum at all. They are free to choose their own courses, curriculum, resources, and materials. But, um, hindi kasi siya DepEd accredited. No? So, they will need to re-enter the DepEd system through the Philippine Educational Placement Test. So, actually, there are so many factors no, to consider when you're choosing the type of school for our child. But finding the right fit in terms of learning style is crucial. So, if a child is not performing well in one type of education, a switch to an alternative learning style or an alternate learning style can really produce dramatic improvements in our child. Okay? Ayan, and dami palang schools. I'm sure our audience have a lot of questions already. So at any time you have questions, just type in your questions in the chat box. No. Mm -hmm. So um, now that we know that these types of schools, I'm sure isang popular question malamang dito sa mga audience natin is, Dok Aisel, kailan ba tayo dapat pinapasok ang mga kids sa school? and Or baka may checklist ba tayong chinecheck para lang malaman natin na ready na yung child ko to go to school? So Dok Aisel? Actually, no, there's really no specific age. It's really more yung we look at our child in characteristics ng child natin. No? It's not the age. So, the UNICEF actually created the framework no, about school readiness. And it's actually this big whole concept that 
not just involves our child, no, but also the families, the environment, the school, and the community. But for the purpose of our discussion today, we'll just focus on the child. So a ready child has to have the skills, the knowledge, and the attitude necessary for success in primary schools. So one, they should have strong physical, cognitive, language, social, and emotional development. So ano ba to, ma to? So physically, they have to be well cared for, di ba? Like um, good uh, nutrition-wise, they are also they have also good nutrition. And then they interact socially with others and they can understand no, the emotion of others, but also be able to interpret and express their own feelings. Um, they should approach learning with enthusiasm and curiosity. So they are kids na very curious and excited to learn. And they they also have should have uh some language no, and listening skills and has the ability to follow directions. And uh some cognitive skills and general knowledge also would also help. Uh when it comes to literacy, at least man lang, di ba, mga identific identification of letters, mga ganon. And for the numeracy naman, at least mga counting, may mga ganon. They know what numbers are, anong ibig sabihin ng mga numbers, one, two, and three, yung mga ganon. Okay? So now that we know the different types of schools and um things that we should look for in our child, no? So... Maybe I think baka magmatter din doc Isel yung parang type of learner no yung kung anong type of learner ka like kunwari di ka ni mo kaya mag sit down in school ano ba yung mga tawag dun sa mga yon no yes. so maybe Dr. Patsy can enlighten us on the different types of learners Dr. Patsy okay sige I'll be sharing my slides So, there. Okay. So, I'm uh, here now to discuss about learning styles. No? So, learning style is how a child prefers to learn new information for effective learning. It's their unique way of mastering new and difficult knowledge. So, what does this mean for us parents, teachers, and caretakers? Even in the same educational environment, learning does not take place at the same degree and quality since each learner's uh, learning process is distinct. So the good news about this is that learning styles change over time and different strategies can be selected and adapted by the learner to deal with different tasks. So there are a lot of models uh, when you read on learning styles and one of the most popularly used is this model. So this is called the done and done model. This model divides learning styles into five major strands called stimuli, and each stimuli has different elements under it. So don't worry, no? uh, we will go through them one at a time, but I just wanted to show you the big picture first. So each of the stimuli work and contribute to one another to define the learning style of the child. So let's discuss what each stimuli is about. The environmental elements that can influence learning include sound, light, temperature and seating. So some students, some learners would prefer to study with background music. Some would prefer a quiet environment. Yung iba naman would prefer a warm environment and others a cool environment and so on. So it is very important to identify and address these preferences as learners show higher retention rates, better attitude, and greater achievement when the environment matches their individual preferences. So let's give an example. No? For instance, um, as you can see in this screen, no, um, when a person is seated in a hard chair, so what we were used to, yung traditional chair, yung wood school desk, 75% of our actual body weight is concentrated on and supported by a four square inch of bone in our buttocks. So the resulting stress um, at that point no, causes fatigue, discomfort, and frequent postural changes for some students. So sometimes a more informal and comfortable seating can actually improve attitude, learning, and attention span of our students. So maybe um, if we can't change the chairs, no, for example, in traditional settings, naman, a more feasible instruction is to have more movement breaks, especially for our young students, um, to uh, relieve the physical stress. Because uh, physiologically, there's really um, stress in the bone of the buttocks no, if sitting in a prolonged time um, in these traditional chairs. So the next element is the sociologic element. So um, 
it can influence learning by working through individuals in pairs with peers and in a team. So a lot of our teachers uh, present new materials in a direct didactic fashion, but there are some kids who are uncomfortable and usually too tense when under pressure to concentrate in a teacher or adult dominated uh, situation. So for a better alternative or maybe an add-on, no, uh, we can present materials um, mixed, no, mix and match, uh, uh, presented in an individual and group session with their peers to facilitate better learning. So psychological elements can influence learning and this include whether you are an analytical or a global learner. So majority of our young children are global learners. So they learn best with discussing the big picture or concept first. So this is what we did today, diba? We talked about the big model first and now we're breaking down the details as to follow. So on the other hand, on analytic learners no they prefer to begin um using step by step no and then looking at the big picture for the emotional elements um it can influence learning also no through motivation conformity task persistence and the need for more structure or less structure so some elements are biologically imposed while others are developed through experience so for example in the picture you see here, a uh, visual schedule, yan, di ba? So it works best for young children, but not limited to young children. Even older learners can benefit from it, especially to those who need um structure, no, what they need to do or what they need to follow. No? On the other hand, some students will learn best through modeling. So they need to conform and see what their peers are doing. So we're down to the last stimuli. So the physiological elements that can influence learning include perceptual elements, food intake, time of the day, and degree of mo mo mobility. So basic basically, this is related to when a student will likely to learn best. So for example, young children learns best with mobility and movement, no? So in between tasks. And actually, when we started reading up on um, learning styles. We see that matching time preferences is also important, no? And it may result in significant gains in learning. For example, most school aged children are not are not actually morning people, and their strongest energy is around 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So, meaning, uh, when instructions and new information are strategically put in particular times, maybe significant gain and retention can be seen. And lastly, uh, we want to touch on this one. So ito yung perceptual preferences and they are classified under four categories. So this is how um, tasks or activities are presented to appeal either to the visual, auditory, tactile, or kinesthetic sense of the child. So this is a very important dimension of the model. And frankly, it is quite isolated. Meaning, if you do read up on learning style, sometimes it is the only aspect highlighted. But again, as we've learned today, no, you saw the big model, um, where it came from, and there are a lot of factors uh, influencing the learning style of the child and not merely their uh, modality preferences. So let's just go through them one at a time so I can provide a little bit tips no, on the different types of learners. For visual learners, of course, they learn best through seeing. So they like diagrams, flowcharts, pictures, and symbols. So they understand concepts through the, these things. No, It is often easy to recall images as opposed to working words. So they also enjoy creating timelines and personal mnemonics they can visually picture in their head. So for older learners... Um, it can be useful to color code their notes. So we see, no, yung mga um students na older they uh they use different post its highlighters, and this actually appeals to their visual stimulation. So they might be visual learners learning from um visual stimulation. Kaya iba iba yung kulay ng notebook and notes nila. So for the next modality, auditory learners. So they learn best naman through listening. So they like attending lectures, tutorials, group discussions. It's absolutely essential for their learning. So if your child is an auditory learner, a tip is reading the textbook or the books out loud because hearing the words and concepts repeatedly or constantly um, stimulates more retention and learning for them. So for our older kids naman, engaging them in group discussions, tutorials, and study groups will allow them to talk about concepts and to listen to the lectures again, not to re-listen. So 
ang maganda sa auditory learners are they are ve- they are very skilled in memorizing lines so for songs lines in theater so on top of academic you know, strength in memorizing this can also be an added extracurricular activity for them kasi they easily memorize lo- uh, songs and lines for mga theater production for our kinesthetic learners naman they learn best through doing so these children like ano Um, games, events, sports, field trips, lab experiments, and even role-playing concepts. So one way to create useful study notes when you are a little bit older, no, if your child is a kinesthetic learner, is to fill your notes with several examples and concepts. The more personalized um, the examples are, the more retention and learning the children gain from, from them. So this is perhaps the most challenging learning uh, modality for high school or for our older um, children because um, there are not much opportunities to engage in hands-on learning as you go through big lecture halls, um, as you grow older, or as the classroom gets bigger. So if you are a kinesthetic learner, extra effort outside the classroom setting might be needed to facilitate better learning for the learner. And lastly, we have the tactile learners. So these kids, they learn best through reading and writing. So they or, uh, enjoy reorganizing their notes, rewriting, rereading, and they enjoy creating lists no, to reread and to rewrite. And a good tip for tactile learners no, is to rewrite um, explanations into your own words. As they rewrite, kasi they retain more information. So to recap, no. So we did um, go through this uh, a while ago. I wanted to go back to this big picture because um, just to uh, show you that there are a lot of elements. And um, what's good about this model is that it uh, focuses more on preferences rather than strengths. Meaning, um, anyone can improve their achievement and motivation if we try to learn and match preferences with instruction. So. As parents, teachers, caretakers, and even the doctors in the audience, no, when you're asked about this, uh, we learn we need to learn to anticipate the environment. So as simple as yung food intake, drink intake, time of the day, opportunities to work with others or uh, alone, si teacher lang ba ang magtuturo or with groups to ensure better learning for our child. So Why did we spend so much time discussing all these elements and modalities? Because by learning the type of learner or the type of child that you have, we begin to enjoy learning more, and this not only improves performance, but along the uh, along the in the long run, no, it improves initiative and motivation. So that's what we want, no. We also want to maximize learning, as we now know what works best in the most efficient matter for our um children and. And we also learn to capitalize on strengths when concentrating on new and difficult information. And we anticipate limitations that we might need to work on. So as our children or as the learners grow older, they also learn to evolve and adjust to the learning environment and eventually plan their own individual additional needs to maximize their learning. Okay. All right, ayan. Ang dami pa lang types of learners. Ako, I feel like my daughter is a tactile learner. So, paano kaya paano ko kaya to iba match sa, sa type of school, no? Maybe our speakers can match our kids to the different types of schools. Doc Isel, Doc Patsy, please help us that ta- um match our kids with the schools. Okay, so for this part, now we will be needing again your participation, our dear audience. So, Uh, type your answers in the chat box. I will be reading them out. So, um, in this part, no, we'll be doing parang may mga sample children tayo, and then we will try to see what is the best or ideal no school. Hindi naman to absolute no. Hindi naman talaga na yun lang yon no. But we'll just see kung ano kaya yung would probably best fit this child. Okay, Doc Patsy. Okay. So yes, yeah, so we'll go through three sample cases and then uh we hope you can type in no so while I'm reading um the description no where you think the child uh would most likely fit in. So for our first child no, he or she is very good in memorizing facts. So we'll try to uh uh recap yung mga diniscuss natin na no, doc ice no kanina. So ito visual learner siya. 
um, uh, he or she enjoys data tables and visual presentation and sort of an auditory learner um somehow no um he or she can stay long no in listening and enjoys um hearing the concepts being discussed uh, to him no or by someone else and uh this uh, he or she enjoys structures, routines, visual schedules, what we've mentioned earlier, and um, very comfortable with the adult leading the way or um, giving instructions. So um, itong type of child uh, for the audience, you think, where does the child best fit in? No? And daming din discuss ni Doc Ice na different schools kanina. Mm -mm. Hey, yan, we have answers pouring in. So parang in general, no, mostly they're saying it's the traditional Okay, mm -hmm. ayan, thank you so much. Yan, dami na. Oh, mostly traditional. Okay, Doc Patsy. Uh -oh. so okay. So, ano ba? Uh -oh. so for this child, no, with this um description, he would mo he or she, no, would most likely fit in. Tama, no? Uh, just like what the audience said. Most likely in a traditional school. Mm -mm. Yes, kasi nga, they are the, the, the children who are visual auditory learners kasi mostly lectures, presentations, and then they like the structure, no? Kasi nga, may schedule talaga, like 7 a.m., ganito, pray, 8, ganito. So, in, uh, structure and routine siya talaga. And it's mostly the teacher, no, who gives the direction. So, they are, they like the adult supervision, no? So, again, traditional nga. It's the best type. But again, um, not absolute. Actually, pwede din siya sa Waldorf type kasi mm -hmm. nga, diba, there's also routine there. It's the teacher who gives the lessons, no? It's just, and then mga auditory learners din, diba, are very good sa mga, ano, sa uh, Waldorf type. Okay? Sige. Can we have our next child? Yeah. Sige, for our next child naman. So, keep um uh, typing in. So, I'll just read it for um everyone then. So yung, uh, this second child naman, he or she is described as a kinesthetic learner. So if you recall a while ago, no, ito yung mga children na they like movement and mobility in between or the tasks, no, or the task itself should involve movement. And they are also tactile learners. Um, they learn well um, through hands-on activities. So lab experiments, uh, role-playing, and um, different um, na pwede nilang hawakan. And uh, ito, as compared kanina, um, they most likely prefer uh, working in groups, no? groups, in pairs, and learning from their peers. So, ano yung ginagawa ng classmate, gagayahin, or they learn through it. They're, um, more, may, they prefer their um, peers teaching them no? rather than the adult teaching all throughout the day. And ito naman, meron din silang a little bit of self-directed learning, experiential. No? Medyo gusto nila in experiment then and at their own time. So self-directed learning. So um, for the audience, you think for this type of child, where would he or she most likely fit in? Ang galing. Dami na nilang sagot, Doc Patsy. Nandun ka palang Nakinig sa sila sa sa'yo. Oh, nandun ka palang sa second characteristic. May mga answer. Uh -oh. Thank you so much. Very participative sila. So, mostly, they say progressive, no? Uh, pero iba-ibang types. There's some saying Montessori, some Waldorf. But in general, mm -hmm. it's mostly the progressive school. So, Doc Patsy, tayo. Ano din ba sa Yeah. Team? So, because nga of the description, no? Uh, this child would most likely fit in a progressive school. Yeah. Kasi mm -hmm. sila yung parang, again, kinesthetic tactile, no? So, very hands-on yung mga yun. And then, enjoys working uh, in groups. Kasi, di ba, um, in other types, medyo individual, uh, like one-on-one, -on -one, yung nag-teach a teacher, kasi you're learning individually, um, konti lang yung group work. So, again, they're correct. Progressive school. Okay, for our last child. Okay. So, we're down to our last child no so ito naman uh, the description is um it involves the family also so medyo flexible yung lifestyle nung family at saka nung child din no so um not so much sticking in a yearly routine uh and ito ren like the second um case that we presented medyo um they need breaks and mobility in between so the long hours it needs to be a little bit more flexible and medyo ang description is kinesthetic learner so they like learning in different um, modes and different environments. So I think yung keyword here for this learner is magaling sila kahit hindi sila nasa classroom, nasa park sila, nasa labas sila. Pero um, the um, key point then dito na we want to emphasize is because nga the child is learning in different environments, uh, different schedules, and very flexible, there is a parent or a guardian willing to be with the child 
um during the learning process it's supervised at least no or guided by a parent so for our audience in this type of situation no uh, with the description of our child san kaya siya uh, best likely to fit in Okay, so again, no, ang galing, ang dami na nating answer. And again, the general consensus is homeschooling or home-based learning. So mm -hmm. I think medyo straightforward naman ito, no, kasi flexible. So we're parang thinking these are the families who are mobile, no, parang siguro their pair, uh, the, the job, siguro they need to be moving around, no, hindi sila nakakag-stay in one place for long periods. So um, they need that flexibility and then of course there's a parent no that's available to um to administer the curriculum or the lessons so doc patsy and mm -hmm. then Natin. Yeah, so ang galing ng audience natin. So yeah. uh, for this child, no, uh, we, he or she would um, most likely fit in a home-based learning. So as mentioned by our audience. Uh -oh. So I'm so happy. no. So again, thank you for participating and listening. So Dr. Patsy, so sana, no, sana all, ganito yung kids natin. No? They, they tick all the boxes in each type of learning ano, no? curriculum. But again, in the real world, I'm sure it's really not like this. no. Iba-iba kasi our children are very individualized. They're very different. And malamang mishmash of characteristics yung meron sila. So do you have other tips no, to help our uh, parent or our listeners decide which is the best fit uh, type of school for their children? Okay, so uh, uh, here are some <clears throat> tips we collated no, based on the most frequently asked questions that we get in the clinic. And what we see are some important points we need to highlight when um, you're, when, um, when the doctor is being asked uh, how to pick a school no, or when your co-parents or your relatives are asking how to pick um, a perfect school. So we first want to highlight qualifications. So uh, qualified and experienced teachers and schools provide a positive learning environment that benefit the learners. So for schools, uh, ideally, um, they must be deaf ed accredited. Although Doc Eyes highlighted naman, there are routes no, for you to enter um, the deaf ed system eventually if you want to transfer here and from. Pero kasi to ensure smooth transition in between different schools no, from private, public, traditional, progressive, home based, and so on. Ideally, they must be DepEd accredited. And uh, for logistics naman, um, there are, uh, we divided it into personal and school logi logistics. So personal logistics, meaning you should consider transportation before and after school care, cost of tuition, kasi no matter how great the school is, if the school you've chosen is four, five hours away from your home, it might not be a good fit, no? practical speaking wise, no? kasi it's too disruptive for the family and the routine of the child. So um, kahit it's the best school but if you're five four or five hours away you might need to reconsider for school logistics naman you want to consider school size class size is it a single sex or a co-ed school so this would depend on what your child can tolerate um, to maximize learning so some children uh, we've discussed earlier would have specifically um, needs for a small classroom size and this is due to their uh, physical, mental, and social need of the child. And for special features, no, um, many schools offer signature programs. So ito yung mga binabasa natin. Meron iba may foreign language immersion, international accreditation, science math affiliation, and even performing arts. But special features are only are not limited to these yung mga special key uh, ano nila meron din tayong mga special feature na hindi natin actually na ma-maximize. No? These are school tours, trial classes, no? uh, online uh, uh, orientation free no? from the, the school. So if we are choosing between two to three schools, it is, it is best to plan at least a year ahead to see the school calendars of the particular schools you want or you're targeting and see the available features. Meron ba silang orientation, school tours, classroom trials? No? Kasi if you can avail of these things, then you can get the feel and your child can actually get the feel of the school itself. No? And of course, very important yung feedback from parents and friends. Aside from our own research, so madalas, no, parents, they do their own research, ang ahaba. Pero parang best pa din to ask the parents themselves, our relatives, friends, colleagues who have school-age children, ano yung experience nila in particular schools, no? Uh, 
because parents are usually very helpful. They will tell you the pros and cons of the schools that their children are in. And most of the time, syempre, they would explain the merits why their school is the best school no, compared to this and that school. So we also want to highlight ito, no, constant feedback from the teachers and the school. See how often um, they would be... So pag may tinatanong, do you have any questions? No, How often are the parent-teacher conferences are? Or if it's not too often, kasi yung iba quarterly or may iba yearly, no? Um, what are the mechani mechanisms available for the school? So you can reach out to the teachers on on a ba on a regular basis if you have concerns or if they have concerns about your child. Remember, these real time feedbacks are very important because we want to help um address and adjust to the particular needs of an individual child not at the end of the year, but as they occur. So lastly, it would be beneficial to have a clear gasp, grasp no, of what we've been discussing the whole time. So ano ba yung learning style? And we match it to the curriculum and teaching style and approaches of the school. So while you want to make sure that the school activities support how your child learns best, no, so ano yung learning style? It matches the school. We also want to um, pick a school that will help our child develop different areas of learning he or she is not familiar with and don't come naturally with her. Because we also want our children to grow. So um, education um, has traditionally uh, been approached using a one-size-fit-all model, wherein students are subjected to the same teaching styles and evaluation method, irrespective of their ability, their preference, their interest. But now, no, we see and we realize, given the different students, their different learning styles, different strengths, weaknesses, and the different um, amounts of uh, parental support they're receiving at home, we now know that one size does not fit all. Ayan. Tama. I think hindi nga lahat papasok sa isa lang na school. No? So, thank you Dr. Patsy and Dr. Isa. We have so much learnings today and I'm sure our audiences have typed in a lot of questions already and now we have reached the question and answer portion. So, if you have questions, just type it in, it in the chat box. We're going to try to read all the um, questions from Facebook and in Zoom also. No? So this is, I think, a question for Dr. Isel. It's from uh, Miss Maria Florin Basi. If my child entered SPED, that is DepEd accredited, can she transfer to a non-SPED program? Dr. Isel. Okay. So I think we'll be getting a lot of questions like this, no, you know, parang from one type of ano to another type, like from sped to regular or from um progressive to traditional or gano, no. So parang in general, it's always best naman talaga to we always go back to the child, no. So mm -hmm. if the child is ready, um you think to um enter a a regular uh program um and then you should have the guidance no, of experts also so it's not just you. you so you always have your tribe around you so you have your teachers you have your doctors your developmental pediatricians or if you have mga psychologists they can help you also decide that no pero when it comes to like ano ba question ni mommy parang legality ba or ano pwede naman talaga especially if you're entering mm -hmm. like a private no if you want to go into a private na parang um a progressive type of ano curriculum so again, it's always your um prerogative. But remember, if you're entering a private school, parang autonomous yun eh. So um, they have the option whether to accept or not. Unlike in a public school, uh, they are required to accept mm -hmm. um all all children, especially those living in their area. Kasi nga um part yun ng uh, governance ne yung rule na parang if you are in that area um living in that area and then a child will enroll then they cannot deny enrollment uh, in that school. Ayan. I hope it answered um, Mrs. Florine Dasi's question. No? So um, I think the next question is for Dr. Patsy naman. Um, it's from an anonymous participant. <laughs> Meron po ba ang assessment framework in terms of finding what type of learning style best for my child? 
Yeah. So actually, um, if you do search in the internet, so we did not share and we didn't have time because uh, when we look through the internet, there are actually formal tests. No? So I'll type in some of them na lang siguro in the chat box for the purposes of our um, viewers today. Pero mahaba kasi siya, so we didn't go through it. May mga 20, 30 questionnaire. And yes, it uh, it could help you then uh, identify if your child is what type of learner. So you can practice the tips that we have discussed today. Mm-mm. Doc Joyce, Ayan. so nang ako yes, acknowledge no si Ma'am Rachel yes. Abella. She has a very good ano input. Um she says uh, in choosing school for a child, consider the beliefs, philosophy yeah. and lifestyle of the parents. I agree, that's very important. Um I think I actually I mentioned on that a little when we were discussing uh, the home-based school learning kasi yun na, uh, each parent have their own philosophy and beliefs naman talaga on how they want their child you not know, to grow up. Okay, so I agree. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that, ma'am. All right. Um, I think this question is for Pwede siguro both, no? I'm consider it's from Miss Erica Galela in Zoom, no? So I'm considering homeschooling for my incoming grade one. She's doing well in kinder as a best friend and is is enjoying school, but she wants to try homeschooling also. So how important is everyday socialization with other kids and building friendships now at this stage? Okay na daw ba yung uh, once a week na may Bali school or once a week na nagsa Sunday school also? O nga do, curious din ako. <laughs> so again, no, we go back to the child. So mommy, I think it's best you find out the motivation first on why yung the desire no to transfer to homeschool so maybe investigate further on that kasi diba when our kids we usually just see the behavior or what they're saying but there's always something underlying no what made them decide that or what made them choose that no so i think it's best to uh, investigate pero again um when it comes to the socialization again no look at your child kung um if the once a week, uh, but when you go out, she's friendly, she can initiate interaction with other kids, cooperates with other kids, no? Um, then that's enough, the once a week. Pero if you're having this once a week uh socialization, but then you know, when you go outside, she's shy, she's parang medyo wary of strangers, mm-hmm. cry, mga ganun. So maybe it's not enough. So maybe we need uh more social uh, exposure with other kids and other people. Oh, okay. All right. Ayan. So, I think... Oh, here. Dr. Morada. Hi. Good morning, Doctora. So, she posted a question and she said, when does the family shift from one mode of learning or type of school as a child grows older? What are the parameters that we should consider? I think the other parents are curious about this also. So, maybe Doc Patsy or Doc Isel. Both of you the man can answer. No, guys. Again. So, again, I don't know. Like I said, no, in general, itong mga ganitong question, you always go back to the child. So, um, we always have to consider the preferences of the child, no? And then, um, you see their learning styles then. It's important. Pero, again, um, Ang tendency kasi natin minsan as a parent is parang we tend to you not know, parang we're the authoritative figure so we may sometimes um impose no on what we want pero um the child's opinion and voice are valid so you have to ask also what they want um so if they're the ones asking for it again no uh find out what's the motivation behind that um, but then again, the guidance of your experts will help. You can talk to your guidance counselors of your child, your teachers, your um, again, your doctors, your developmental pediatricians, if they have psychologists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doc Joy, so, sing it ko yes, lang, no? Yeah. Um, there are some parents kasi sending in uh, private uh, questions then. So I wanted right. to sum it up. May tatlo na nag-send. Um, it's mostly mm-hmm. on socialization. So um, mm-hmm. a lot of those who sent in private kasi parang may mga diagnosis, either autism mm-hmm. or ADHD. Right. And they're asking about um regular school kasi um, their children are very good at memorizing, no socialization, pero... Ay, memorizing pero hirap with socialization so ang question is is it better to uh, put them in um 
school or homeschooling na lang. So, ito mm-hmm. for questions like this, no, um, it's really best to ask your um, doctor also kasi it depends on the levels. Uh, most of the time naman, it's still best to put them, no, so it, it depends on the behavior and um, uh, level of the child. If um, in terms of socializing, hirap lang siya mag-initiate, but um, okay naman in terms of tantrums and um, participating no, in routines or following, then um, uh, best pa rin to put in a a uh, group no but in terms of picking if homeschooling talaga or um in a traditional big group no um it's best to do yung kahit yung um consult with your developmental pediatrician kasi um the levels they can really um give you even specific accommodations for particular cases especially for the diagnosed ones ayun so tama so i think kapag may ganyang mga diagnosis, I think better to consult a subspecialist pa, no? Just to know kung tama na ba ipasok sila sa mga ganong schools, right? So, here, Dr. Patsy, I think you can answer this question from Mommy Jennifer Garcia. She wants to ask lang kasi her daughter speaks mostly English now and just a little bit of Tagalog. Problem yata lahat ng bata ngayon. <laughs> and then, goes to a public school now. Well, it affect her attitude or maybe her development ba? Kasi nanonotice daw ni mami naging sensitive siya. Mm-mm. So I think for Filipino no medium, siguro more of practice then at home. So uh, we see it in the clinics eh, na yun talaga yung hirap nila, yung medium. Um, maybe it's because of the pandemic no? Um, and um, yung socialization din natin na we stayed in one language. Pero uh, that's how... Uh, of course, we're a bilingual nation, so we really have to uh, practice Filipino. So maybe you can put in more extracurricular activities you know, where they can talk to their peers also um, uh, outside the classroom setting then para they can practice and have modalities in um, using Filipino, not in academic setting, para walang masyadong mm-hmm. pressure. Mm-mm. Correct. Okay. Okay, this one. When is the best age to know your child's learning style. I think another parent, it's from Miss Mylene Benindo. I think another parent asked this also kanina eh. Parang, um, kailan lumalabas or kailan natin mananotice na ah, tactile learner or um, kinesthetic learner pala yung child. Go, no? Parang ganun. Eh, Doc Patsy. Ah, so, um, actually, we would know through um, experience and by doing. So, kahit wala pa sila sa school, no? So, when they're starting to walk, um, you would see, no? Mas gusto niya nakikinig, no? Kapag may mga nag-uusap or mas gusto niyang parang um, nakikigaya or hinahawak-hawakan different mm-hmm. textures. So, um, that's an informal way of testing. Kasi yung um, a question earlier, kung may formal test ba? Yung informal is to actually just observe your child, no? As they start growing, mm-hmm. walking, how they play with their peers, talk to their um siblings or neighbors ano yung mga preferences nila so may iba mas mahilig na takbo ng takbo may iba na parang sulat naman ng sulat no or hawak ng hawak ng texture so you would see um ano yung preferences nila all right okay eto pa kay para kay Doc Isel naman to would it be helpful to enroll my kid in a play school to gauge what school is good for him pag mag-enter na siya ng kinder or nursery daw do yeah definitely no um kasi um, makikita mo na how your child interacts, how they learn, and then you'll get also additional input from your teachers, no, on how he learns best. And pero thank you din ako no kay Ma'am uh, Donnellyn Villegas. Uh, it's so nice to see our mothers are ano uh, giving their advice na rin to um to other mothers in our chat. So thank you. So yeah. for her now, what work is free trials on different schools and methods. So yes, I agree. Um. Schools usually allow na um, mag-sit in yung mga child um, for a few days or a week, mga ganon. Para lang mm-hmm. din really to see. Kasi in, iba yung concept, di ba? When you know the concept and yung nandun na, face-to-face na talaga nila na-experience yung school and the type of school. So yeah, that's a very good way talaga. So again, play school would help really. Um mm-hmm in deciding when we want to start like formal schooling na talaga. Right, ayan. So mag-play school din ako daw. Okay, so I'll just read the um Dr. Morada's um comments cuz it it's also nice, no. She said that she believes that the parents should be should be sensitive enough to detect changes or development of the child. That's why important na 
you get to follow up with your pedia regularly as your child grows not only when like may sakit lang sila no so yon so not only medical problems yung ina address ng mga gen peds ninyo no so you can follow up with them also for these questions yeah okay did we miss pa any others for other questions yes doc doc Joyce may na akong nakitang question no about yeah. uh, the co-ed and the exclusive type oh school. yeah hindi ko na makita sa chat pero um sige um for that based on research naman parang there's no difference naman no sa outcomes ng mga kids that were sent in regular school and uh, in exclusive and or co-ed type of schools no um pero again um you always go back to your child um kung nakita mo parang shy siya around boys or around girls mga ganon so maybe um hindi naman like drastic as changing schools no pero siguro yun nga um then you provide more mga um inter uh, chances for mga interaction or opportunities for interaction with the 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 the, the, the different ano gender no so ganun lang but based on research naman talaga there's no uh, difference in the outcome of um mm-hmm. those in exclusive or in co-ed um but i think yun nga yung important din no what we should um also take note as your child is growing, no, their development kasi is ongoing. So, the development is very dynamic. So, pwede talaga mag-change year per year, day by day, pwede talaga mag-change. So, mm-hmm. again, um, it could be na ngayon, okay sa kanya tong type of school, and then next year, parang ayaw na niya. So, we really need to take note of that. Kasi nga, they're developing, eh, they're changing. So, um, it's not static. So we have to always be aware of where our children are, no, mentally, physically, emotionally, morally. Because as they become teenagers, no, they develop na rin their own mga uh, moral set of beliefs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think in Facebook we also have some questions. So si Ma'am Jo Joan May um naga ask siya, is it a behavior problem or an issue? Because yung kanyang grade two na uh, child um is having school refusal. So previously nagpapumapasok sa school and now um umiiyak, nagsasabi ayon na niya yung classmates niya no. So for cases like this mm-hmm. no, usually kilangan pa din uh, what we highlighted constant feedback. So ask the teacher what's happening um uh, uh baka naman um too difficult but for the child something happening with the uh, children no socialization and sometimes no um as we've highlighted best to also seek um your uh, pediatrician or developmental pediatrician for um opinions also sometimes kasi baka the difficulty doesn't match the child and um there are things going on kasi tinatanong niya if kailangan ba niya ng child psych or devpedia already kasi refusing talaga to go to school so yun yung ano best talaga first to talk to the teacher what's happening no um in terms of socialization and learning. Mm-mm. All right. Okay. I think there's a question about um they don't they want to know more about integrated schools, I think. So, okay. so integrated schools, no. Um parang I don't think it's really in like a official na parang may sarili silang ano. Um mm-hmm. pero it's uh when they say integrated, meron siyang features of the traditional and then they combine features also of the progressive type. So, mm-hmm. merong mga lectures but they also have um, siguro I think they equated no parang 50-50 na may mga lectures and then meron ding mga group projects, hands-on learning, um, experiential learning, they also go outside, ganyan. So, um, again, uh, you look at your child if this is working for them naman, so then go ahead. So Miss Candy no is an, uh, asking about sample schools. So uh, I recommend po ma'am again uh, like na mentioned kanina no ni Mommy na it's best if you ask the school uh, what type uh, they are always very willing naman to to talk to you uh, explain to you the philosophy of the school and what are their teaching methods. So uh, again you can ask if your child also can sit in or observe um in the class uh so you will really know if this is the best best fit or not all right so i think there's a facebook question lang from miss alwina gayap panaw hi po is it advisable to allow a teenage child with down syndrome to enroll in sped 
if she has not tolerated the fo- formal setup. Paano kaya yung Doc Isol or Doc Patsy? Um, it depends, no? Um, ito, mm-hmm. very specific na kasi siya. Sobrang case-to-case. Number one, teenager and with Down syndrome. So, um, mm-hmm. we really need to determine the levels to uh, to really accurately answer this question. Medyo um, mahirap po siyang um, i-advise ngayon, no? no sped siya or traditional. But it's really mm-hmm. the levels, no? What they can tolerate socialization-wise, learning-wise. Kasi if they can tolerate uh, a little bit of yung heavy work in terms of academics, then pwede sa traditional. Um, um, if behavior then can um tolerate a little bit longer for the traditional but yun it really depends on um on the child all mm-hmm. right okay i think that's all the time we have for now unfortunately but um we would just like to read some of the um comments no thank you for attending this webinar again no so doc patsy and doc Isel, congratulations for this very good and um, simple and informative webinar according to Dr. Chu. So, so there. And from Mi- Ma'am Dom Sagaran, thank you for the insightful talk. I learned so much this morning. Ayan, thank you for everyone who joined us. Um, truly, this this um, Doc Patsy and Doc Iso, baka you have some parting words for us. Yeah, okay. So as you can see from all the questions, no, um, the quest of finding the right school. So some are asking us for specific schools. Medyo mahirap po yun to answer. Pero the right school, the right fit, is one of the toughest decisions that we make no, as a parent or as a doctor advising our parents. It's a really a tough decision. But in the end, we just want to highlight that curriculum should be academically challenging but not overwhelming. So yun yung keyword. Mm-hmm. And this means that uh, we really need to find the balance and talk to a lot of people, consult uh, our um, pediatrician, developmental pediatrician, the teachers, no, our co-parents. No? So we will be able to match um, the good fit. No? So remember to consider the child, the school, and even the family no, uh, as you make your decisions for your children. Mm-mm. So for me, naman, no, Doc Joy, so we are very fortunate in this day and age now we have so many choices now which type of school no we want our kids to go so again just to reiterate you need to consider your child's cognitive skills their learning interests their styles their social physical tendencies and of course the beliefs no and the lifestyle of the family mm-hmm. is also very important um to quote no John Dewey he is one of the biggest advocate for experiential learning and progressivism Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. Thank you. Wow. Well said, Dr. Isel, Dr. Patsy. Thank you. This discussion has truly been a great start to our morning. Thank you to everyone who watched with us. And to Dr. Isel, Dr. Patsy, until our next Coffee Coffee and and conversations. Conversations. And thank you again to our speakers. I enjoyed our coffee and conversation this morning. For all our participants, thank you for joining us. For your certificate, you may scan the QR code or click the link below in the chat box. I will return to this slide in a while for inquiries about us and other pediatricians and other specialists at the Medical City. Please contact the Institute of Pediatrics with this number. For inquiries about us and other pediatricians and other specialists at the Medical City, please contact the, uh, please contact the Institute of Pediatrics with this number. And if you have any concerns about your child's development and behavior, or you just want to check if your child's development is on the right track, you may bring them for developmental screening at the Center for Developmental Pediatrics here at the Medical City. I would like to invite you to our upcoming webinar on April 20, 2024 at 2 p.m. We are inviting you to our parent class on language stimulation. Our expert speech language pathologist, teacher Zoe Bautista and teacher Charles Lim will guide you on how to promote your child's language development. To register, you may scan the QR code. Again, thank you for spending your morning with us today for the Institute of Pediatrics Learning Academy's Coffee and Conversations. I'll leave you with this the link to the certificate. The, this link will only be open until 5 p.m. today. See you in our next webinar. I'm Dr. Joyce Guse Pascaran for Coffee and Conversation of the Medical City Institute of Pediatrics. 
your partner in pediatric healthcare. Good morning, everyone.